Well, hello there, Elders Stephen and Rochelle Taylor. Hello, hello, hello. Sarah Greg, how are you? God bless you. Hello, Don Stoss, how are you? God bless you. Hello, Terrence and Carolyn Berry. God bless you guys. Hello, Mary Puckett, Bolden, how are you? God bless you. Hey, Connie Cameron, how are you? God bless you. Marsha Wright, how are you? God bless you. And hello, Carolyn Moss and Dwight Moss. God bless you guys. Hello, Elijah and Alyssa Braddix. God bless you. Constance Roby, how are you? God bless you. Alexandria Jones, God bless you. Good evening. Hello, William and Gretchen Hudson. Well, God bless you guys. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Pat Walter, how are you? Hello, Eddie and B. Huey. God bless you guys. How are you? Elders Robert and Tracy Carr. Good evening. God bless you guys. How are you guys? 
Hello, hello, hello. Send a smoke signal, text, message, send a uh, email, send a inbox. Let somebody know that we are starting church tonight, Wednesday night, midweek service. We're going to be starting here in just a moment. Praise God. We're going deep. Woo! We're going deep. Let them know. Let, let them know. Tell somebody that's going to 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 tell somebody. We going deep. What they say on football? Go deep. Back, 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 back. Go deep. Mm -hmm. We throwing it out there. Hello, Princess Rena. Hi, Princess. Love you, sweetie. Jovan and Kyla Foot, how are you guys? God bless you. Love you. Love you. Good evening. Hello, Linda Tripp. God bless evening. you. Good evening. How are you? Praise God. We're going to go ahead and start. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. I'm Pastor Alvin White, and this is my lovely wife, Pastor Latoya White. Good we evening. welcome you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Blessings to you and your family. We are praying for you. We are believing God for wonderful, great things for you and your family. Amen. And, um... Your business, advent, you know, ventures and 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 uh, everything that uh, God is having you be involved. We are praying for you. In fact, we pray every Friday morning. Mm -hmm. We pray for every Friday morning. Hello, Patricia Kreider. How are you? God bless you. God bless you. Uh, tell them about you. prayer on Friday mornings. <laughs> yes, every Friday morning at 7 a.m., we pray right here live on Facebook where you put in your prayer request and we agree with you in prayer right then. So set your alarm. So you can tune in and pray with us in the prayer of faith. Amen. Amen. Talk about um, the Sunday in live in-person service. What do they have to do? Yes, our Sunday live in-person service. We have a registration form for our in-person service. It's quick and simple. You can get to it through our church app. Or you can go to our website and you can register there. And there's also a text message, a mass uh, message that is sent out towards the end of the week that has a link for that form. So it's quick and easy and has instructions on there. And it also preserves a seat 
for you when you arrive because we are still in the social distancing phase. And so we have a distant and limited seating. So you can register again through our church app or on our website. Okay, praise God. All right. So with that said, um, those are the things that are coming up. And um, praise God. So you can, you can use it. praise God. So again, welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. We want to welcome everyone that is watching us live. If we did not call you out. We want to say good evening to you. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless yes. you. And uh, we want to say welcome to anybody that's watching it. You know, maybe you're watching the playback or maybe you're watching it on YouTube. We're going to upload it on YouTube here um, later on. So with that said, um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel or like and also like the Empowering Word Christian Center Church page. Uh, Facebook page, like the Empowering Word Christian Center uh, Facebook page. So praise God. Um, but you want to subscribe to our YouTube page because we have things uploaded um, on there as well. Hello, Elders Levi and Dawn Jones. Good God evening. bless you. Good evening. And so you have that. Also, download the Empowering Word Christian Center Church app. It's free for Apple and Android users. Um, download it free of charge. Keep up the date. With all the goings on with Empowering World Christian Center, different things that we have going on, different things that can help you read the Bible. There's uh, daily devotionals, things of that nature. And also you can give. I'm going to segue that into giving. Amen. We believe here at Empowering World Christian Center, we believe in tithe and offering. And so in that, we're going to go ahead and receive our uh, midweek tithe and offering. This is our midweek service. We're broadcasting live from our home. And so... Um, with that said, we believe in it. We believe that when you get born again, you are blessed. Uh, you receive this call, this, you receive Jesus who, who is the blessing, has the blessing, uh, which is the power of God to do well and have good success. Praise God. Hello, Brenda Sanchez. God bless you. God bless you. And everybody else that's joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, um, you can give, go to empoweringword.net, click on the give tab. And you will be able to give that way. And, um, you know, PayPal, we use PayPal as the engine. You don't have to have a PayPal account. Use your debit or credit card. Go ahead and give. Give right now. Proverbs 10, 22 says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and has no sorrow. Go ahead and give. Praise God. We, we thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. Everyone that's giving to Empowering Word Christian Center as we... Um, uh, advance and further the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your blessing over your people. Yes. Father, even in economic disaster, yes. Lord God, just like in Genesis where you told Isaac to sow in the land, your people will be obedient to sow yes. and they will prosper and continue prospering and become very prosperous. No matter what's going on, Economically, your people are hooked up to the economy of heaven. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and praise you right now. And Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your anointing. Father, we thank you that every distraction is yes. removed. Your grace, your power, your love is here. Yes. Your word is here. Your yes. anointing is here. Yes. Thank you for ministering through us. Thank you for opening our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Yes. We bless you and praise you in Jesus', in Jesus mighty name. name. Yes. Everybody said amen. 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 Praise God. Let's jump right into this and we're going to go deep. Glory yes. be to God. We're going to go deep. All right. Now. This is from the series. This is God's uh, prophetic agenda, part 19. This is God's prophetic agenda, part 19, which means that there are 18 other parts. And if you haven't watched those, you need to go back and watch those. You need to go back and watch them. And you need to get the scripture and meditate on what. Because we are talking about God's prophetic agenda, see? And so people have an agenda, uh, organizations have an agenda, everybody has an agenda, and uh, political parties have an agenda, uh, you know, whatever. Churches have an agenda. But we are talking about God's prophetic agenda, which supersedes everybody else's agenda. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he said, it will come to pass. And... It will come to pass, whether it feels good, whether you like it, whether you agree with it, whether you think it's the right thing, 
It will come to pass. Amen. And in God's prophetic agenda, you cannot pray away the rain. You build the ark and get your family on the ark. In God's prophetic agenda, you can't pray away the death angel. Amen. You go and prepare the sacrifice and put the blood on your doorpost and get in the house and shut the door. Amen. 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 So God's prophetic agenda supersedes man's intellect and reasoning. Yes. In God's prophetic agenda, you cannot reason Jesus not to go to the cross like Peter tried to do. Yes. He tried to say, hey, Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the chief priests and, and, and so on and so forth. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. And so in God's prophetic agenda, if you are trying to save your life and preserve your life so you can have a good life and so that you can do what you want to do and live your life and do your thing, the Bible says you will lose it. Yes. So you need to understand God's prophetic agenda. All yes. right. Yes. Yes. So yes. this is part 19. And in part 19, we are starting something brand new you can put a subtitle on this. Mm -hmm. The subtitle is God's Algorithm, yes. Part 1. So it's God's Prophetic Agenda, Part 19, but the subtitle is God's Algorithm, Part 1. Mm -hmm. And so the definition, what is an algorithm? Because you hear that a lot, mm -hmm. the word algorithm, when you talk about, you know, if you spend, if you spend some time around people that are very... Uh, intellectual uh, about computer programming and computers and software and and and, uh, and and things of that nature and and social media uh, anything that's uh, high tech uh, people most people will have some type of understanding about algorithm yeah, okay yeah and so and the definition of algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problems, solving mm -hmm. operations, okay? So an mm -hmm. algorithm is designed to solve uh, operations, especially by a computer. In mm -hmm. mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is infinite is an infinite sequence of well-defined computer implementable instructions. Mm -hmm. So we can say that an algorithm is something that has instructions programmed mm -hmm, in it mm -hmm. to to give in a desired outcome, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. So typically to solve a class of problems or to perform co uh, computation. Mm -hmm. An algorithm is saying, do this, do this, right, do this, right. and here's the rules that you're going to fall in. You know, I took computer science one yeah, I in too. high school. Mm -hmm. You took computer science mm -hmm. one, and in computer science... They teach you how to write programs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're simple programs and a lot of if-then statements mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And so I remember writing programs. Mm -hmm. I remember that, mm -hmm. and I remember setting the rules, mm -hmm. and I remember putting in the instructions, mm -hmm. and the goal, mm -hmm. the goal was so that it would end up mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I actually wrote a program for tic-tac-toe. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wrote a tic-tac-toe program, and I put in the rules, and I put in the parameters, and I put in the instructions, mm -hmm. and the program played tic-tac-toe. Mm -hmm. um, and so, a, a simple program, but that was the algorithm. Right, that right. was the instruction. So, algorithms are always unambiguous. Unambiguous, mm -hmm. which means they have specificity to them. Mm -hmm. They are strategic. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory good, be to God. Good. They have... Uh, they have a order to them, okay? Yeah. So they're not ambiguous where we just going to throw something right, out there right. and see what sticks um, and are used as specifications for performing calculations, data processing, and other tasks. Right. One of the most obvious examples of an algorithm to really bring it to where we all are on the same page is a recipe. Right. right okay? Right. It's a finite list of instructions used to perform a task. So, for instance, if you were to follow an algorithm to create brownies mm -hmm. from a box mix, mm -hmm. you ever go to the store mm -hmm. and you buy that, you know, Duncan Hines or, you know, what was another one that they, they got out there, you know, um, you know, yeah, but uh, Pillsbury or something like yeah, that. Yeah, brown, uh, Muffins. Muffins or something like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to follow that recipe. Mm -hmm. 
you would follow the four or five, six mm-hmm. steps mm-hmm. so that it would come out the desired brownies, mm-hmm. cookies, muffins. But the algorithm is the steps and instructions right. to produce right. the desired right. outcome. Right, right. God, I'm telling you here, right. God has his own algorithm. Yes. Glory be to God, I'm yes. telling you. Yes. He's got his own algorithm, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, within the construct of God's prophetic agenda. Oh, I like how that sounds. Mm-hmm. Within the construct of God's prophetic agenda is God's own algorithm. Mm-hmm. Why? Because nothing just happens. Mm-hmm. You got to get out of your mind that, oh, you know, these things just happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that. listen, mm-hmm. nothing just happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, don't think that this, this thing just made news or yeah. this cop just shot this unarmed man here or, you know, this, this, this cop just, you know, we just saw this man and, and, and he died on national TV or national social media or this explosion just happened or this thing just happened. Nothing just happened. Or this earthquake just happened to happen. This volcano just happened to happen. This, no, 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 no. This executive order just happened to be passed. This celebrity just news came out about what's going on. Nothing just happens. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you need to get that in your heart. Mm-hmm. Nothing just happens. Mm-hmm. But it is following a set of parameters that God has already orchestrated. Glory be to God. Yeah. Why? Because God spoke it into existence. And now in that speech, hallelujah, there is instructions to carry out yes. fulfillment of what he said. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. That's why the kingdom is voice activated. Yes, That's is. why prayer is so critical for the born again believer. Because when you declare the word of God, Amen. there's instructions within the word yes, that cause people to start doing yes. and following according to the word of God. Yes. That's why he said angels hearken unto the word of God. Yes, why? Yes, because yes. they're part of the algorithm. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, ha, ha, yes, glory yes. be to God. Now. What are I want to what we're going to talk about because we're going to stay on this for a little bit here. What are the components that make up God's algorithm? Mm-hmm. And so um, we have right now six components that mm-hmm. make up God's algorithm. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 so one is no. Oh, I'm sorry, we got five. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Uh, one is numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, number two is colors. Mm-hmm. Number three is signs in the heavens. Mm-hmm. Number four is places. And number five uh, are names. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Numbers, colors, signs in the heavens, places, and names. Mm-hmm. And so um, we are allowing the Holy Spirit just to download this. This is all coming through direct download from heaven. So if the Lord adds more and reveals more, uh, we will give more. Now, all of these components, all of these components have the backing of his word. Because remember, his word is above everything. He will bring what he said to pass. Remember the part of the series where we talked about must he will bring it to pass. Psalm 18, verse 30. Go yeah. there with me. Psalm chapter 18. Glory be to God. Psalm chapter 18. And let's look at verse 30. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. Glory be to God. 
The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust him. Yes. So God's ways are perfect. Yes. And in this way, in this, because when you look at the word perfect in the word of God, mm -hmm. when it's talking about God's people being perfect, it means mature. Yes. But here, and when it's talking about God's ways are perfect, it means they have no error. Yes. It means they have they have strategy. They have specificity. Yes. They have directness. They have intentionalism. Yes. That's what that word perfect means. There's no error. There's no fault. There's nothing. So God's ways are perfect. So don't you think that, oh boy, you know what, man, it just so happened that there is a coronavirus mm -hmm. that, no, don't you think one moment that that thing just kind of happened, somebody in a lab or somebody in a wet market mm -hmm. accidentally got a hold to a bat and ate mm -hmm. the bat or I don't know how they did or they were in the lab and brought home the coronavirus and they lab coat forgot the vial or what have you and then it spread through or kissed the boyfriend. No, 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 no. None of that happened. Just happened. That is within the construct of God's algorithm. Why? Yes. Because in Matthew 24, he says in the last days, there will be this and this and this and pestilence and pest. all of that is designed to happen. Yes. And that sometimes is tough for the born again believer to get because you realize, oh man, this was going to happen. So see, that's why, you know, Noah, I'm sure he didn't spend a lot of time you know, thinking, oh man, this ain't right. Oh man, I need to go. We need to spend more. You know, this ain't right. This ain't fair. This, uh, you know, he didn't spend a lot of time debating. He just heard the voice of the Lord. Hey, this a flood right, is coming. Right, right. I want you to build an ark. Get your family in there. Right. So that's that's what we're talking about. All right. You know, there's another scripture, Hebrews one three, mm -hmm. where it says, "Who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, upholding all things by the word." Oh, glory! You got to read that again. That thing is power. Yes, Hebrews one three, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the by the word of his power. Mm, Wait. That is powerful. Yes, yes, yes. That is powerful. Glory be to God. All right. Now, let's see here. Um, hallelujah. Now, you got to um, you got to uh, get this in here. You got to get this in here. Now, look at this. In this, you have to understand Numbers. We said numbers were part of. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Carlos and Anna Conception. God bless y'all. We love y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, you have to understand that numbers are part of God's algorithm. Numbers. Why numbers? Because we know numbers are part of God's algorithm because his word is direct specific and intentional intentional about mentioning numbers mm -hmm. okay we're gonna go deep here oh yeah we're gonna go deep it's 2020 ain't no shallow end no more all right <laughs> now we know numbers are part of god's algorithm because his word you can look throughout his word you can go throughout this bible and it is specific about numbers it is specific about how many how old how uh, wide, how deep, yeah. how long, how many days, what month, what day, what time it was. Okay? That's not on ex that's not on accident. That's on purpose, okay? Yes, yes. We also know numbers are part of God's al algorithm because God is very specific about people being obedient to carry out certain tasks with numbers in mind. All right? We know numbers are part of God's algorithm because God is very specific about people being obedient to carry out certain tasks with numbers in mind. Mm -hmm. Go to Psalm chapter 147, verse 4. Honey, you have it right there. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Did you hear that? Another translation says 
he mentions the numbers of the mm-hmm. stars. Another translation says he uh, calls out the numbers of the stars or tells the numbers of the stars. Mm-hmm. Glory be to God. So he counts the numbers of the stars. I don't know how many stars there are, but goodness gracious, guess what? God does. Amen. Isaiah 40, verse 26. We're talking about numbers. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. Oh, wow. He calls them all by name, Mm. by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Wow. Glory be to God. Amen. Uh, Job 28, verse 23 through 25. God understands its way and he knows its place for he looks to the ends of the earth and sees under the whole heavens to establish a weight for the wind and a portion by and a portion the waters by measure. So he establishes a weight Mm -hmm. for the wind. That's a number. Yes. Weight, we measure weight by numbers, right? Yes. yes, And then he's going to measure something else. Yes, yes. Glory be to God. Yes, that's good. That's good. Good, good, good stuff. So we want to lay some foundation, all right? Now, we're going to go deep here. I want some I want some thumbs up, some hearts, some something. Let me know you getting this because I'm just got just got to keep going, so let me know you getting this, all right? So we're going to set some foundation and let you know what uh, some numbers mean. We're going to go 1 through 12. We're going to give you some examples um, and we're going to tie this in to God's prophetic agenda, all right? So the number 1. The number 1 represents unity and sovereignty, okay? The number one represents unity and sovereignty. It also represents Jesus. The number one represents Jesus as there uh, is only one way to the Father. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen Mm -hmm. to that. In fact, he said, I am the the way. way. He said, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Yes. So that's Jesus represents number one. Yes. There's there's only one truth. The number one also represents truth because there's only one truth. Yes. See, there's not a lot of different ways to get there. Yes. There's yes. only one truth. Yes. Honey, you have something? Yes. Galatians 3.20 says, Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Oh, glory so be to God. So again, it talks, it, it's just verifying the sovereignty of God, that yes. God is one. This talks about the law being fulfilled. And then Galatians 3.28 says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Wow. So that's talking about unity. Mm-hmm. We are all unified in Christ. One also represents, we talked about a unity, the power of agreement. That scripture is powerful. The power of agreement. If you can get the body of Christ and the power of agreement, there will be one, one mind, one voice, yes, one thought, yes. one, everything God does, the enemy yes. uh, tries to replicate or yeah, tries yes. to counterfeit. The enemy also tries to use the number one. We can see that by having, remember, in the Tower of Babel, they had one language. They had one voice. They had one mind. And God came. This is Genesis chapter 11. In Genesis chapter 11, he talks about it. And they wanted to build the tower up to the heaven. What were they really wanting to do? Remember, 200 of the watchers yes. came down through Mount Hermon, that which is a portal on earth to the supernatural. I'm going to yes. go there scientifically. It's a portal uh, area. And they came down. They were the watchers. They were supposed to teach mankind, yes. you know, how to um, live now yes. that they have fallen. But they began to teach them the secrets of heaven. Yes. And they began to uh, procreate with Women, the daughters of earth, they bore them giants. They bore them giants. And so in that, um, that's how they happen. And so 
these people, Tower of Babel, yeah, they course, remember yeah. that the star people, if you go throughout yeah. the cultures of the world, they all, every, every single yeah. culture of the world, every, I don't like to say every because it's so uh, 100%, but every culture of the world has stories passed down from generations of people from the sky coming down. And they have drawings, they have pictorials, yeah. Yeah. all of that. Yeah. And so what happened is in the Tower of Babel, they yeah. were trying to reach these yeah. people, yeah. these fallen angelic beings. They were trying to reach them, build a tower to them because they wanted the wisdom. They wanted the knowledge. That's why the yeah. all-seeing eye is about the knowledge. It's about the knowledge. So the enemy tries to counterfeit, counterfeit. the number one mm -hmm. with um, with agreement. Yeah. And if you look in the world, every single thing that the devil does, he has a one voice with it. Mm -hmm. It's a satanic one voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to, you got something? Well, I was just reading it and it said, and these people are one and they all have one language and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld. Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld. Not one thing. Hmm. And so God had to confuse their languages. Hmm. Why? God himself had to bring strife and division amongst men yeah. so that he would protect them from being lured by these fallen angels hmm. again. All right. That's all right, That's so good. in that, number two, what does the number two represent? Go ahead, honey. It represents either union and unity, covenant or division. It also represents compare and contrast, Old Testament versus New Testament, or the first Adam brought death into the world, the last Adam brought redemption. Yes, so that's the number two, okay? So it can mean unity Yes. like a man shall... Uh, uh, cleave with his wife and they become, go, you got it right there. Yes. So Mark 10, verse seven through nine, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. See that? The two shall become one. That's yes. what the number two represents. So the number two will relate to number one yes. from a unified perspective. Also, uh, go ahead. You, you can go ahead. Matthew six twenty four. Now, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. See? Or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And ma so, yes. so that's a representation of division. 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 Yes, division. That's where people are trying to serve the world and trying to serve God. And God's saying, listen, you can't serve me and serve the devil at yes. the same time. Yes. Your soul is divided. Yes. But when we think about unity... He says, where two or more gathered, yes. I am in the midst of them. That's where he's them. talking about that unity, all yes, right? Yes, you got yes. another scripture I see there. Yes, and so Luke 10, 1, where the 70 was being, were being sent out. Yeah. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two Glory to for God. his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So he sent them out in pairs. He sent them out in pairs. Why? Because the power of yes. agreement. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. two will always reproduce. Oh! That's so good. Woo! That's good. And remember he brought the animals to by Noah yes, two, two by two. two. Why? Because two will that. reproduce. That's so that's why, that's why, listen, 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 that's why sexual perversion is such a abomination to God. Because when God puts two together, he's wanting to put one one way and one the other way so it'll reproduce. That's why God says we have different gifts. Listen, he doesn't want... Uh, uh, seven billion pastor whites on the earth. He wants everybody having, why? So that when Pastor White gets with Pastor Latoya, now you can produce something that uh, that's spiritual. But if you have two of the like, two of the like, you cannot reproduce. Yeah. You cannot produce the fruit. Yes. Glory yes. be yes. to God. That's Are you good. hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You need to understand that God is specific and yes. strategic in his construct yes. and in his algorithm. Okay? Yep. Now, in this, uh, number three, 
Three is known as one of the four spiritually perfect numbers. Write this down. Three is known as one of the four spiritually perfect numbers. Uh, the other spiritually perfect numbers are seven, 10, and 12. We'll get there. Just hold on. Seven, 10, and 12 are the other spiritually perfect numbers that, that uh, many uh, believe. Now, there were three. Now, the, the, now, let's talk about the significance of three. There were three righteous patriarchs before the great flood. Who were they? Abel, Enoch, and Noah. Remember, Cain killed his brother Abel. And God said Abel had offered a righteous sacrifice or a holy sacrifice or a, an acceptable sacrifice. Remember, Enoch walked with God and then God took him. And then remember, Noah found favor and was found righteous in God's sight. And he so you have three patriarchs before the flood. Mm -hmm. And then you have three patriarchs after the flood, who mm -hmm. were they? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Mm -hmm. Also, there are mm -hmm. 27 books in the New Testament. Remember, 27 books in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That is not by accident. Why? Because that is three times three times three. Or it is three to the third power. Glory be to God. Yeah. That is very critical. We also have, obviously, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Remember also, Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane before he was arrested. Mm -hmm. Also, Jesus was placed on the cross at the third hour of the day in the Jewish time. Mm. That would have been 9 a.m., which would go 3, 3, 3. Mm -hmm. Third hour of the day in Jewish time, 9 a.m., uh, the standard time mm -hmm. of the world. Now, we're going to talk about that number nine, okay? We're going to talk about that number nine, okay? And Jesus died on the ninth hour of the day of the Jewish time, which would have been 3 p.m. everybody else's time, okay? Mm -hmm. So we see here that three is playing in there. There were three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was on the cross. Glory be to God. There were three hours of darkness. It was from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Christ also rose on the what? The third day, glory be to God. There were three witnesses who saw Jesus transfigured on the Mount Hermon. I told you Mount Hermon is a very spiritual portal place on Mount Hermon. Remember, it was John, Peter, and James. They were witnesses of Jesus leaving his uh, earthly body and transfiguring into his celestial mm -hmm. heavenly body. Uh, state. Mm -hmm. Paul mm -hmm. was caught up to see God's throne mm -hmm. in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. The third heaven is where God dwells. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. the wise men. Let's go back. The wise men gave three different kinds of gifts to Jesus at birth. They go, gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. What we're trying to tell you is that Three is a spiritually perfect number. And when you see three, then you are seeing something spiritual there. And, and all of these numbers, but three is very, very dynamic. Yes, it represents the number of God. It represents yes. the Trinity, the mm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is that perfect number. It's the full Godhead. Yes. So when you see this number in the Word of God, it's very important. Like Mark 9, 31 <clears throat> says, For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. On the third day. day. Glory to God. Jonah was in the belly of the well for yes! three 
days. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. Yes, Mary. Glory be to God. Mary was with Elizabeth for three months. Mary was with Elizabeth for three months. Yes. While she was pregnant. While yes. they were, glory be to God, while they were pregnant. Yes. They were with each other for three months. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, within the construct of God's prophetic agenda yeah. is God's uh, algorithm. Nothing is just happening here. That's right. Mary just didn't say, I'm going to stay with her for three months. Yeah. She, come on. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. And then Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in We're, Jesus' name. Come on now. There he is in the midst. See, yep. are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory be to God. Let's move to number four. Four represents creation. The number four represents creation. Okay? God created the material universe on the fourth day. He completed it. He completed the material universe. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the stars and the sun and the yes. moon and all of the material. He completed that and then he went more specific to earth uh, later on. But he completed the material universe on day four. Yes. And so in that, God, uh, we have the four directions of the earth. Yes. We have the four directions, north, south, east, and west. We, which also have the four winds of the earth. The four winds of the earth along with the four elements of the earth. You know them. They are fire, water, air, and earth. Maybe some people thought there were only three because they grew up listening to earth, wind, and fire. No, no, no. There's actually four elements of the earth, and yes. that is fire, water, air, and earth. All right? Yes. Now, there also are the four corners of the earth. Yes. The four corners of the earth. So four represents creation. Honey, you got some more with that? The the word four in the Greek actually means total coverage or the universe. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Yes. Mm. And you can read about that in Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Mm. Then you go to Matthew 24, 31, where it talks about the four winds and it says, yes. because we are Woo. in the beginning. Is that Matthew 24? It should oh, <laughs> snap. Glory be to God. That is in Matthew 24. Read it. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they will gather together his elect ah, ah. from the four winds. winds from one end of heaven to the other. Woo! From the four winds. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Go ahead. John 19, 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts. Oh, glory be to God. Four parts of his garment. Four parts. Representing the totality of universe. Yep. Covering. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. So... And then to each soldier a part and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. So they took it in four parts. Glory be to God. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody said Peter, Peter denied, denied Jesus, Jesus three, three times. times. Yes. And if you remember, yes. Jesus yes. asked him, do you love yes. me? Three, three times. times. And he said, yes. yes. Why do you keep asking yes. me that? Do you love me? Yes. He had to cancel out those three yes, denials. Yes, Why? Because three yes, is a spiritual. Now, yes. uh, that's four. Let's yes. jump. You have anything else about four? Let's jump to five. Are you ready for five? Okay. Five represents God's grace, his goodness, and his favor. Why? Because five represents God's hand. Yes. The hand of God is represented with the number five. Are you hearing me? So five represents, if you remember, there was, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. If you go to, I believe that it's John chapter five. And if you, yes, it's even in chapter five. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, John chapter five, verse one, after this, there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
Now there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, mm -hmm. which is called in mm -hmm. Hebrew Bethesda, having mm -hmm. five porches. Mm -hmm. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, he was made well of whatever disease he had. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was an angel demonstrating the grace of God, the favor. Whoever stepped in there, they received God's grace. They receive God's hand. Mm -hmm. They receive God's favor. They receive God's goodness. They receive mm -hmm. healing. Where was this located? At the five port. It didn't just happen to have wow. five porches. Wow. Come on, somebody. Wow. It didn't just, oh, let's just put five porches up here. Wow. Why? Because six is too many and four is not enough. Wow. No, that didn't happen. That was in the construct of God's prophetic agenda. Wow. You need to hear this. Glory be to God. Wow. All right? Wow. Hallelujah. Okay, glory be to God. Now, wow. look at this. God, you have something about five? Oh, that was it. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's move to number six. Move to number six. Six represents man. Why? Because God created man on the sixth day. Yes. Okay? Yes. Man was created on the sixth day. It also represents, most importantly, Fallen man. Yes. It represents weak man, frail man, weakness. It represents evil and man uh, uh, joined into sin. The bringing together of three sixes represents spiritual mockery of God's perfect number of three. Mm -hmm. Remember, three is a super spiritual number. So when you have a six here, which represents fallen man, mm -hmm. then you have another six, which represents fallen man, and you have another six, which represents fallen man, that's when you have a trinity. It's a counterfeit trinity. Mm -hmm. That's why 666, six, six, when the tribulation hits, is the mark of the beast. Yeah. Oh, should we go further? Yeah. We're going to go further yeah. with the number three. In the tribulation time period, the Re book of Revelation speaks of the dragon, yeah. the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Yeah. They work together. That is the ungodly, unholy trinity. It's the dragon uh, who is Satan. It is the Antichrist who is a governmental leader of the whole world, and then it is the false prophet. Yeah. The false prophet is the leader of the one world religion. That's where you get that three, and that's where you also get the six, six, six. Yes. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Glory yes. be to God. You know, in, uh, it, the six in the word, the Greek word is hex. <clears throat> hex. Wow. And what is hex? Uh, it's a spell. It's a spell. It's evil. It's evil. It's the car. It's the carnality. Yes. Of man. Yes. When you think about the number six. Yes. It, you know what is? It? But on the flip side, this is what I seen. Mm -hmm. Matthew seventeen one through four. Jesus transfigured on the sixth day. Woo! Glory be to God. Oh. So what that says. Now, after six days, Jesus yes. took Peter, James, and his brother and led them up the mountain. Yes. Oh, and he transfigured. Go ahead. Just say what, what you going to say. What'd now, say? after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Mm -hmm. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Mm. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. Notice that three. three were there. It was Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Yes. Remember, three Ooh. is a uh, it is a, a perfect, perfect yes. spiritual number. Yeah. So remember, how many people were on the cross when he died? Three. Three. Remember, Jesus yeah. was in the middle. There was right and one, yeah. two. Was, somebody get happy. Yeah. Somebody see. That there is a there is God's algorithm yeah. in the construct of his prophetic agenda. Yeah. Oh, somebody might be getting freaked out. Somebody might be getting a little scared. Woo, 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 woo. 
But I'm trying to tell you this. You got to understand that this thing didn't just happen. This, the, he transfigured after six days. Why? Because he was, he did it on the seventh day. Glory be to God. Mm. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yes. All right. Amen. Now, okay. Listen to this. Let's move. You got something else for six? Mm -hmm. Let's move for seven. Seven represents completeness and perfection. Mm -hmm. It is one, it is one of the perfect spiritual numbers. Mm -hmm. um, it represents completeness and perfection. According to the Jewish tradition, Adam was actually created on September 26, mm -hmm. 3760 BC. On the first day of Tishri, which is the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar. Did you know that? Adam was created, this is according to Jewish belief. He was created in September. We're going to get to the number nine. Oh, you don't want to miss this. You want to stay tuned? Call somebody. Call somebody. Call somebody. Text somebody. Because it's, it's, oh, it's happening. It's happening. I know that we've been kind of jumping around, but just stay with me. He was created. Adam was created in September. Okay? He was created on the seventh month. Tishri. God rested on the seventh day of his creation. He rested. Remember, there were seven churches in the book of Revelation. The seven churches or seven types of Christians. Seven types of churches as a warning to the last days. Remember in the tribulation, we talked about the seven seals and the seven trumpets. And there also, we haven't gotten to it yet, there's the seven bowls, okay? Seven is one of the spiritually perfect numbers. You got something? Um, yes, it's a, it is God's perfect work. It is God's finished work, okay? So when you see the number seven, it's his perfect, it's perfection. It is another perfect spiritual number, mm -hmm. okay? So one of the scriptures that I've seen was Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him mm. up to 70 times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 70 times seven. Mm -hmm. And then one of the miracles that Jesus... So that's, that's 490 times he's saying. In yeah. other words, j just forget, right? So you could, you, you know, you could multiply that forward and divide it back. But yep. 70. It equals seven. It equals seven. seven. One of the miracles that, Je that Jesus worked was in Matthew 15, 34, where it says, how many loaves do you have? Jesus mm. asked. And they replied, seven and a few small fish. Remember, there was seven total things of food. Mm -hmm. There were five loaves and two fish. Why were there two fish? Because remember, Jesus said you will be fishers of men. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was calling people fish. Mm -hmm. The fish represented people. Mm -hmm. In other words, represented unity, represented oneness, represented. And so the five loaves, get this represent provision, mm. favor, yes. blessing, the hand of God. He took five loaves. He took five, which represented prosperity and provision with two fish, mm -hmm. which represents two people. Mm -hmm. And he put it together and made seven. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. And what else I've seen in this is also God's instruction because mm. he was strategic with the loaves and the fish. He mm. gave them instructions. He yes. blessed it and he told them 
to, he turned to the people, he gave God thanks and he turned to the people and they were eight and they were satisfied and there were seven basketfuls left. Glory be to God. Seven left. Yes. Now, there's another one where there was 12. So there's two stories mm -hmm. of the five. There's two stories. The one is the five loaves and two fish with the 5,000. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the one with the 4,000. Yes. There yes. were seven left. Yes. And there's another one where there are 12 baskets yes. full. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Okay, we got to go deeper. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Glory be to God. You got something else? We're going to go to number eight. Eight represents new beginning. Starts all over, brand new. Eight represents new order. Hmm. Eight represents new beginnings and new order. Remember, boys were circumcised on the eighth day. Hmm. Remember, eight people mm -hmm. were on the ark that started life on earth again. Noah, his wife, his Three sons. He had three sons. Mm. Spiritually perfect. Ham, Shem, and Jepheth. And they had wives. Each of them had wives. So that's eight. So you had eight that started mankind's life all over again after the flood. So eight represents new beginnings. Okay? Honey, you got something? What? And after, so John 20, verse 26. Glory to God. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with Jesus. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. Mm. Reach your hand here and put it inside my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Mm. So, again, it's talking about <laughs> Jesus being with his disciples eight days yes. after the tomb. Yep, after he resurrected. Yep. Wow. Starting, basically, new beginnings. Yes. All right? Okay, we're going to get to one of my favorites, number nine. Are you ready for number nine? Mm. Are you ready for number nine? Okay, hold on to your seats. Hold on to your seats. Nine represents divine mm. completeness and finality. Mm. Nine is at the end of the number because you have, we normally start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but actually you should start with zero mm. because that's, 10, right? You don't start a decade mm -hmm. with one. You start the decade. Like 2020 started a brand new decade. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's the ot, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so nine represents finality. Remember, Christ died on the ninth hour of the day. All right? Mm -hmm. He died on the ninth hour. So that was finality. That was divine completeness. Remember, there are nine fruits of the... I'm going to, let, me, let me stop here. Nine is a number of... Nine is a doorway to the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, re you ready? Okay, Christ died on the ninth hour. There are nine fruits of the Spirit. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Nine is a super spiritual number in itself, and that's why nine is used in all witchcraft and sorcery cult religions. Mm. Nine is used in all witchcraft and sorcery religions. In fact, in the Old Testament, 
there were at least nine individuals or groups who practiced sorcery. I don't have time to get into them. There were nine major groups or people that practiced sorcery or witchcraft. Nine is a dimensional number and unlocks dimensions. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That is why you cannot be a person who, tr mm. that is why you cannot truly mm. operate in the fruit or walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit without actually being filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm going to say it. There are people in the world that can be quote unquote good, but they can't truly receive God's love, joy, and peace. They can't walk in faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. They can't walk in goodness and they can't walk in, in all of the, the, the nine fruits without soup. That is why you cannot walk in the soup. You cannot walk in the fruits of the spirit unless it be why, by way of the supernatural. That's right. They're divine. They are divine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you can't operate in the gifts, nine of them. You can't operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit without being filled. So what I'm saying is, is nine connects you to a power, either the Holy Ghost or demonic control. Nine is a dimensional number. It will unlock dimensions. That is why, oh, are you ready? That is why in the Masons, those that are in the Masons and the occult and different witchcraft organizations, the Masons, Masonic, mm. they, the highest you can go mm. is the 33rd and a third. 33 and a third. What is that? That is three sets of three. It is 33 Point three. Mm. If you add that together, it gives you the perfect nine, mm. which is symbolic of some type of supernatural power. Mm. Goodness mm. gracious. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go there. Oh, you got something? Mm -mm. Okay. But I'm going to have to hold off. Okay. Glory be to God. Did you get something out of that? Did you get something? Nine, boy, 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 is dimensional. When you see nine, it has the power to unleash stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Woo! All right. <clears throat> Let's jump to 10. Let's jump to 10. You don't want to miss Sunday. Let's jump to 10. Glory be to God. 10 is another spiritual perfect number. It represents so many things. I've talked to Empowering Word Christian Center yes. about this many times. Yes. 10 represents breakthrough. Yes. It represents salvation. Yes. 10 represents Jesus. The yes. X, the Roman numeral X represents Christos or Christ is translated. It represents Christ, X, Roman numeral X. Deliverance, it represents power. It represents healing and grace. It also represents judgment and law and favor. Uh, five is God's favor. Yes. If you say 10, it's double the favor, okay? So judgment, it also represents wealth and prosperity. Uh, if you remember the tithe, give yes. God the tenth. Yes, yes, yes. It's it's acknowledgement of the blessing. He said he will rebuke the devourer if you give him the tenth. Yes. He said that 
uh, um, Abraham gave him the tithe because of the blessing. T uh, the 10 has to do with law. Um, the Passover lamb had to be selected on the 10th day. Uh, they had to select the lamb. It had to be uh, selected on the 10th day of the first month. Okay? Yes. The three Hebrew men, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember they were 10 times better than the Babylonian counterparts. Yes. Remember in the book of Revelation, the beast has 10 horns. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes. Remember, there were 10 disciples when Jesus was on the cross. Judas was no longer a disciple. He had hung himself. Peter technically was no longer a disciple. He had backslid. That's why the angel said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Mm -hmm. So 10 represents uh, judgment and favor and wealth and prosperity. It represents breakthrough and salvation. 10 represents that. When God had Noah on the ark, he saw the tops of the mountains during the 10th month. It wasn't until the 10th month. So what I'm saying to you, 10 is very super spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay? 10 is very powerful. That's why, yes, he, we have the 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. I saw somebody, yes. Mm -hmm. And the 10 plagues mm -hmm. of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Oh, trying to give this to you. Yeah. Glory be to God. In the 10 talents. And what's interesting about the 10 talents is he blessed the one that had the five talents. Yep. yep. Because he multiplied it into another, he ten. turned it into another five, which yep. was 10. Yep. And then he blessed him and said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yep. And then he told the wicked and lazy one to give his to the one to the head 10. With the 10. Yep, yep. Also, remember the 10 virgins. Mm -hmm. Five didn't have the oil, mm -hmm. five did. Mm -hmm. But they were 10 in all. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, glory be to God. Now, let's move to 11. Move to 11. 11 represents chaos and disorder. 11 represents chaos and disorder. Why? Because 10 is order. 11 goes and supersedes that. But 12 is superiority order. And it doesn't get to 12. So it's in the middle. It's in no man's land, 11. 11 represents chaos, disorder, judgment. 11 represents breaking the law. Okay. I told y'all nothing just happens. The reason why there is something in American history and throughout the world, call 911 is because you have nine, which is a door to the supernatural. Mm. And if you have 11 or one one behind it, it's a representation of judgment starting in the supernatural manifesting in the natural 911 let me go back to the number 9 9 is one of the most spiritual numbers you can ever have let me go back there 9 the September, the month of September, remember, according to Jewish tradition, Adam was born in the month of September. 
Let me let you in on another secret. Jesus was not born on December 25th. Jesus was actually born toward the end of September. Oh! I said it. Jesus, September is coming up. The Jewish New Year is in September. It's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. It starts Friday, September 18th at sundown and ends on Sunday, September 20th. September is the most supernatural spiritual month of the year. I'm bagging up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's the ninth month. And it's the Jewish New Year. It's also the year, it's the time when Adam was created. But more importantly, it's also the time when Jesus was born. How do you know that Jesus was born in September? I'm so glad you asked. Because, excuse me. Because if you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 8, the Bible says that shepherds were tending their flock. Well, shepherds were not normally in the fields during December due to the cold and wet conditions in Judea of that time of the year. Also, secondly, during the time when Jesus was born, they were taking a census. Remember that? They wouldn't have been taking a census in December. But here's the kicker. Remember who was pregnant? Elizabeth. Mm. Based on Elizabeth and Mary hooking up, Elizabeth was six months pregnant when she went to Mary, when Mary went to her. So that was in January. Oh, nine months later is September. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, September is the time where Jesus was actually born. Mm. Toward the end, it may even be during Rosh Hashanah mm. when Jesus was born. Mm. The ninth month, mm. something supernaturally, oh, mm -hmm. came into the earth. Mm. Woo! That's good. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Now, Going back to 11, if you look at 11, oh, that did not just happen, but that was filled with witchcraft and sorcery, and 11 represents chaos, disorder, and judgment. Even the Simpsons predicted 9-11. They did. Mm -hmm. That is why the emergency number is 911. Mm -hmm. Trying to get this. I'm trying to get this to you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. In the construct of God's prophetic agenda mm -hmm. is God's algorithm. Mm -hmm. Trying to get That's this good. to you. That's good. But it doesn't stop there. Oh! Because you can add 9 plus 11. Mm. And you will get the number 20. Mm. 
what is happening mm. in 2020. Mm. I'm trying to get this to you. Mm. Chaos. Dysfunction. Mm. Yes, sometimes 10 plus 10 is 20. But when you see the number 20, for God's people, it's double for your trouble. Amen. It's 10 plus 10. Amen. But for the wicked, it's 9 plus 11. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm trying to get this to you. Mm -hmm. Boy, 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 boy. Boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. boy, I'm trying to get this to That's you. Good. Trying to get this to you. That's good. All right? That's good. Woo! Woo! Glory be to God. That's good. Let's move to number 12 and we're going to end it up. Mm -hmm. Are y'all getting some today? Are y'all getting yes. some? Yes. Amen. Are y'all getting some? Amen. Glory be to God. 12. 12 is the other spiritually perfect number. It means God's power. It means um God's authority. It means God's government. Mm. Remember, 12 sons of Jacob. Mm. Jacob was later named Israel. So that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus had 12 disciples. Mm. Ishmael, who was Abraham's son... Hagar mm. even had 12 princes. Mm. Why is that important? Mm. Everything God creates, the enemy counterfeits. Right. The enemy knows God's algorithm. Remember, Lucifer came from heaven. Mm -hmm. So even Ishmael had 12 princes. Princes. I even heard somebody say something about 12 more years mm. from a governmental perspective. I'm just going to let that sit with you. Mm -hmm. Because nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing just happens. That came out somebody's mouth. It was on TV. I saw it all over the news. I heard people shouting 12 more years. Nothing just happened. <laughs> yeah. And I heard somebody say, say 12 more years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a spiritual number. Mm -hmm. Remember, the 144,000 were sealed. Jews during the tribulation. That's 12,000 times 12. Remember, there's 24 elders around the throne. That's yes. 12 times 2. Yeah. God has a prophetic agenda. You got something? Mm -mm. God has a prophetic agenda. Okay? Yes, 2 and 10 together. 2 and 10 together. The 12 gates to the city. Mm -hmm. Even... New Jerusalem has 12 gates and all. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Glory be to God. Two and ten. You have two unity. Go with ten gods. Or division. Or, yeah. See? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nothing just happened. Nothing just happened. No. This stuff ain't just willy-nilly happening. People just think, oh, that's all oh, that. Oh, it's election year. Oh, it's it's hurricane season. You got two tropical storms, hurricanes hitting at one time. Oh, we gotta let you go. Yeah. You don't want to miss Sunday. Yeah. I'm gonna let you know a secret. This right now is the Jewish year 5780. Mm. The 80 decade 
means pay. Mm. P-A-Y. Mm. It means pay. P-A-Y. That is translated mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, I'm going to say it. <laughs> yes. Prophetic agenda in the Jewish year of the mouth. Yes. People, what do you do with your mouth? Mm -hmm. You breathe. Yes. People have lost breath. Mm. Also, what do you do with your mouth? You shout. Mm -hmm. All the protests that's going on in the world. Mm. Oh, I'm trying to tell you. 2020 mm -hmm. is no accident. The year of the mouth. It's the year of the mouth. You don't want to miss Sunday. Mm. Jesus. We got to stop there. We got to stop there. Mm. Get right with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Get right with Jesus. Pray this prayer with me. Say, mm. Heavenly Father. I repent. I need you. Forgive me of all my sin. Mm -hmm. Wash me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed that prayer, let us know. We want to help you. God bless you. Yes. Father, touch your people. Bless them. Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Have a great night.